Hi everybody, welcome to Sutton's Days. Today we are going to do a basic strawberry jam recipe. This recipe is found on the Ball website. I'll put a link down below. We're doing this video because uh, my buddy Jeff over at Homestead Dad asked me to do it and then he'll do a video reply. Go check out his channel if you would. It's a great channel. Uh, there's a link in the description box below. All kinds of homesteading stuff. All kinds of, it's like a vlog kind of thing, but homesteading. Oh, awesome. Awesome channel. Good guy. Really great family. And uh, I hope that you go check out his channel and support it. So he's going to do a video response to this, making his own jam. Yum. I mean, how can you go wrong with strawberry jam, right? And strawberry jam is so simple and so basic that it's perfect for the beginning canner. So what do we have here? We have five cups of strawberries. We have six cups of sugar. We have a quarter cup of lemon juice that we're going to use, and we have six tablespoons of pectin. I've switched over to the Hoosier Hill Farm pectin. You can buy it in bulk like the bag you see there. Absolutely fantastic. A lot less waste, you know, by throwing out the box and the package and all that fun stuff. I'm very impressed with the quality. Um, I'll put a link to that down below also in case you're interested. I get it right from Amazon and shows up here it's a resealable pouch so it's really easy to store or you can put it in a mason jar you know so all good stuff let's get started okay as these heat up we're gonna cook them down you want to make sure not to burn them just cook them down I cut them up last night and then put them in the fridge so they were ready for this morning okay so as these heat up, the juices will come out, and you'll get this beautiful strawberry mixture, okay? Let's do that. And of course, we're going to have steam, so I apologize for the steam, but this only takes just a few minutes to do. You cook them down, but you do want to mash them up. I don't puree them, per se. I mean, I would skip a beat and, you know, put this in the Ninja and puree it that way but because um, I do like chunks and so I'm going to assume that the people who are going to eat this are gonna like chunks this is a jam not a jelly so you're gonna have nice pieces of strawberry mixed in the jar it's gonna be beautiful Did I mention that okay I'm gonna let this cook a little bit more I want to make sure to mash as many as I can but I want to get as much juice out as I can too so maybe, oh no, it's boiling. Okay, so we're good. <clears throat> That's a good sign. Now we're gonna take our six cups of sugar and we're gonna put that in there. And we're gonna mix it all around. You'll notice it soaks up all the moisture. And now I will move over to a spoon because you can never have enough dirty dishes, right? Okay, and if you've watched me for any length of time, you know I like my long spoon because these things tend to spit, and they seem to have really good aim for my hands. So, you don't need a lot of fancy tools for this. You can wash your jars and put them in just a plain pot, or you can wash your jars in the dishwasher, and that is good, but make sure that when you are making jam that they are hot jars, okay? So now we're going to keep stirring this. Sometimes I think I over worry it, but I'm a better safe than sorry kind of gal too. So we're going to, <laughs> we're going to worry this a little bit. Make sure it doesn't scorch. You can even turn down your heat a little bit if you want to. I still have it up pretty high. Okay, because the end result is we want to do this until it boils. And this process also will cook down those berries quite a bit. If I don't think they're cooking down or, you know, mashing up as much as I would like, then I have my potato masher handy still, but I think this will do just fine. Okay. Not yet. While we're doing this, I do want to mention, when you put your lids in the water, you want to put them in you know water heat up the water but you don't want it boiling and you don't want it to boil you want it to get to be hot water because what it's doing is it's loosening that rubber seal on the lid um, but you don't want to boil it and then just turn off the heat and let it sit there 
they'll be just fine. See how liquidy this has gotten? But the jars in the water, you can go ahead and leave those on because we are going to use that same water to water bath can the jam. Okay, I'm doing this naturally around a dog who it just started thundering. So I'll apologize if the camera moves a little bit. <sighs> Between the 4th of July and the storms, it's been a riot. Okay, so we have this all nice and boiling. See how it's foaming up? There are ways to handle the foam. I don't think it's a problem. I think most of it goes away when you're with your finished product. Okay, so now that it's boiled up like this, we're going to add the lemon juice. And then we're going to let it boil for another couple minutes. Easy peasy. I have a shaking dog sitting between my legs. <sighs> okay. There we go. There we go. I am her thunder jacket. Look at that. Beautiful. Smells so good. Okay, so now we're going to take the pectin, sprinkle that in it, and mix it up. And now we're going to let it boil for three minutes. Okay, now what I normally do, I'm not doing this time, but what I normally do is I put in my thermometer, my temperature, th you know, well, obviously temperature thermometer. I put in my thermometer, and I like to bring this mixture up to 220, 230 degrees, okay? And once it reaches that, you should be good to go for your gel. Okay, I think I'm gonna mash down some of those berries just a little bit more while I can. If you like chunky jam, it's not a big deal. If you don't like chunky jam, um, I would recommend putting it into something and pureeing it. Okay, come on. I'm not going to leave any of that yummy goodness behind. Okay. Here we go. Okay, now we're going to get ready to move it into jars. Be sure to turn off your heat because you do not want this to scald. And if you're on a, an electric burner stove like I am, um, you want to keep stirring it until you see it stop boiling because, you know, those coils keep heating up for a little bit and you don't want it to scald. Okay, just to make sure this video goes off with every hitch possible, we have some major thunder boomers coming through. Dogs are freaked out. It's a hot mess. So, I always use a towel that I don't care about when I'm filling jars. Always. Because if you care about it, you're bound to be disappointed, <laughs> okay? Never fails. You end up dripping some over, and it's a mess. Okay, so I'm taking the jars out of the water, and then we will start filling them. Now in the bottom of this pot, um, if you saw my How We Buy Used Pressure Canners video, um, I'll put a link above, it showed um, that this had a rack in it. And you want the rack in it, you don't want the jars sitting right on the bottom of the pot. Okay, so now, oh, where's my ladle? So now we're going to fill the jars. You want a quarter inch headspace. Headspace is important. So make sure that you get it as close as you can to that, okay? Quarter inch headspace. And especially if you're intending to sell the jam, um, people like full jars. They really, really do. But the headspace is important in its own reasons um, as far as preservation, preserving goes. There we go. The recipe claimed that this did eight jars. So we shall see. Okay. The 
This smells amazing. Phil walked in the house. He says, the house smells good. <laughs> That's because we're making jam, babe. Okay. The house always smells good when you're making jam. Once these are all filled, I'm going to grab my vinegar and a paper towel and I'm going to wipe down all the rims to make sure because you know I'm going I'm working over the jars, so you're bound to get some drips. You really are. closer. I want to get in there and I want to do every single jar. Okay, see how, I don't know if you can pick that up, but see how it's got it on there? So that's a good thing because you don't want anything trapped between the jar itself <clears throat> and the lid. Because that is one of the ways, ooh, God's messy on this one. That's one of the ways the lids fail. It's all these little steps that make for a successful project. You know, the worst part is I love thunderstorms. I always love thunderstorms. I've got two dogs that are terrified of thunderstorms, so whoop, it's going to be a while before I start enjoying thunderstorms again. Oh, that's really unfortunate because I really don't want to Benadryl them if I don't have to have to look up those thunder jackets. Do you guys have a thunder jacket? If you have dogs that are afraid, let me know what you think of them. Do they really, really work? Okay, so the rims of the jars are all clean, and now we are going to take what, what, what? Okay, never grab, and I mean, you've, you, you know, you'll hear all kinds of things, okay, but you never want to touch the rubber part, okay? I unfortunately seem to have put most of these in upside down, so it's a little challenging to not touch it at all, but there we go. Okay, so we're going to get all these lids on. Now, the pot that I'm canning in um, is a smaller pot. And these are wider jars. Aren't these the coolest jars, you guys? I got these at Walmart. I think I showed you one time on a haul. Anyway, um, so if you want to stack, you can, but you need uh, a rack in between the two. So I'm gonna have to see if my rack works in this pot. Probably should have done that beforehand. Okay, jars are hot, remember that. These jars are hot. So I'm going to get the first four jars in, and I've got the water moved to the bigger burner now and turned up to high. Hot. Okay. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. Okay. Don't put your fingers in the water, please. to water bath can these now. I'm just going to do four at a time. I have time. It's a thunderstorm. Okay, so we're well over, well over um, an inch. You want no less than an inch of water over the top of these, okay? I've got it on high. They're going to come up to a boil. Once they come up to a boil, 
which you have to put your lid on. It, trust me on this one, it won't boil the way it's supposed to <laughs> unless you put your lid on. Um, but put the lid on when it comes to a boil, then start your timer and you want to process these for 10 minutes. Okay, here they are. Fresh out of the canner. I mean, the pot's still cooling down. Look at those. Look at those beautiful jars. I really like these jars. They're wide mouth. Here we go. They're wide mouth jars. I want to say they're care jars. K-E-R-R. -R. They are. They're care jars. I got them at Walmart. I love them. Sometimes you just gotta mix up the jar, you know? So here we have eight beautiful half pints of strawberry jam, classic strawberry jam. So now we're gonna let these sit overnight and then tomorrow we're gonna make sure they're all sealed. We're gonna wash down the jars. I'm gonna slap price tags on them <laughs> and, then, and then put them away. But these are gonna be scrumptious and delicious. So, Jeff, it's time to make some jam, my friend. It's time to make some jam. Be sure to check out Homestead Dad. He's going to be doing a video response, making some strawberry jam himself. Really good stuff. Again, the link for this recipe is in the description box below, as well as a link for the pectin that we are now using. I'm loving this stuff. Loving this stuff. Okay, remember, if you like what we do here, please hit that like, subscribe, and share. Check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And until the next time, everyone, be safe.